You wouldn't necessarily need to do that. I haven't seen that in. We, we have that in the uh, fitness center. Okay. There's a. There used to be an increase. An auto, you had the ability to increase fees by a certain. Yes. Percent. Is it three percent or is it six? We took away the percentage. Okay. Two years ago. All right. My mistake. I thought it was still there. So yeah, if you were to include something like that, it wouldn't need to be done annually, but they, that is one of the items that they look for is any department that charges some type of service fee, um, they want it to be approved by council. Um, so for a portion of tonight's presentation, we're gonna quickly go over where we are with our 2023 revenue, and then we'll focus on 2024. So the revenue estimate for 2023 for the general fund was $30.8 million. Uh, 25.6% or 25.6 million of that comes from municipal income tax collection. So, like I said, income tax collections are the bread and butter. They are how we sustain most of our general functions within the city. Um, just a little update to that. Through today, that number is 28.9 million. So we are almost to the 29 million mark with about a month and a half to go. Um, Income tax collections are currently at 25.1 million. So we have also we have yet to make 1.3 million dollar transfer from the ARPA fund to the general fund. That was a replacement of uh, monies for police salaries and um, the road program that we received through federal funding from ARPA. So that those two numbers alone, between tax collections and that transfer, are going to take us over our estimated collection amount. Um, So there are other items. We tend to break things down um, by how the GFOA asks us to. So if you see, there's one small chart. Municipal income tax makes up the vast majority of it. Um, charges for services, um, which would be like parks and recreation, senior fees come in the general fund. Um, investment income, uh, so anything that we receive from Star Ohio, our bank accounts, our investment accounts. Um, and then there's some smaller items, licenses and permits come out of the, the building department, planning commission fees, those all make up the fees that are in the general fund. Um, so we will move quickly to the enterprise funds. Again, those are any type of business type activities which are paid from user fees. So sewer revenue fund, fitness center, golf course. And I did omit the theater fund. The theater group has reached out to the city they would like to, all of the money that we hold, we almost hold in trust for them, uh, they would like to operate on their own going forward in 2024. So we are looking forward to, you'll see in the expense presentation, we are transferring all of that money out. They will be receiving the money from the city, we will leave the program in their hands, and then we will look to the auditor state to close that fund. But the monies were collected from their revenues coming in all place and fees that they charge for that anyway. So we weren't subsidizing that to the best of my knowledge. No, we weren't. <clears throat> but it's just at this point we have to have it as an expense and we have no revenue coming in for twenty twenty four for that. Okay. Can I so, ask a quick question? Sure. Which which are which presentation are you actually going through right now? As because I there's a few different ones here, and I want to make sure I'm on the right one with it's you. It's 2020. It should be titled 2024 Budget Presentation. Okay, perfect. Okay. The overview yeah. and revenue for yes. that one. I just want to make sure we're on the same because I don't okay. know. What, there's different ones <laughs> there here. Are, and, there were a lot of things sent out. Right. I, I'm, I sent the expenses as well, just because it's on first reading tonight. I actually had a quick question about this document. So sure. we're looking at uh, when. We're talking about the golf, Glen Eagles Golf and Banquet. Mm -hmm. It mentions in the write-up about the the, um, the revenue that we get for renting Aaron and Moses, but it's not in the chart. Correct. So there will be. I'll just skip to that part first. Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, so one of the things that was hard when comparing the Glen Eagles revenue is we switched from the city operating the restaurant to a private group doing it. So in those years that the city was operating it, we had revenue that was coming in, and instead now we just receive a rental fee monthly um, from, I think JJB is the group that we um, that runs the restaurant. So it was very difficult to compare numbers because you have one a couple years that are completely skewed because right. you have banquet numbers and things like that. So that's why I only took the top four 
main categories because there's no way to really compare when we no longer run the okay. restaurant. Okay. So one of the things um, that will be changing, hopefully for the better in 2024, in the contract we have with JJB, we get a set rental amount through the end of 2023. So in 2024, within the first quarter, they have to submit to the city what their total revenue numbers were for 2023. If it was greater than what they are currently paying us, which comes out to, I want to say, like $86,000 a year, we get the greater of that rental fee or 6% of their gross sales. So we hope that their gross sales were more than that, obviously. Um, but is that settled monthly or quarterly? It's monthly. Okay. So the problem is, is that we won't find out until quarter one of 2024 what that number is going to be. But it's based on 2023's numbers. So luckily for the golf course, they have had a phenomenal year. Um, the weather has been great. They're a very weather dependent industry, obviously. Um, their revenue, um, their greens fees have exceeded their revenue estimate. Um, they, right now, they are about $200,000 short of their total estimate. I know Brian tends to run a pro shop sale towards the end of the year. The weather this week has been phenomenal. They've had great numbers this week. We're <coughs> anticipating that we are going to give them less than what was requested for their subsidy. Um, in their budget, there was a $171,000 transfer from the general fund. We're anticipating that it may be 55000 So awesome. to, to cut that in more than half is phenomenal. That's amazing. Um, That's amazing. You know, obviously it fluctuates from year to year depending on the weather. And, you know, we're hoping that whatever money the banquet center and the restaurant did bring in is more than what we're getting in rental. So hopefully the revenue number just continues to increase next year. So I will switch back just to the sewer fund real quick. Um, the sewer revenue fund is comprised of sewer rental fees from businesses and uh, residents tapped into the city's sewer system. Revenue estimate for 2023 was 4.2 million through October. Uh, they have collected 4.6 million. So they're 11 and a half percent over their estimate. Um, this is really, um, it could be attributed to new businesses. The wastewater department ran an intern program this summer, which the intern went in to select businesses and they, she um, evaluated the number of fixtures they had and then it really allowed the city to get an accurate count of um, what those businesses were paying versus should have been paying. So we did receive some extra revenue from that program. Um, so that was really beneficial. Um, as everyone knows, we're in the design phase for the new wastewater treatment plant facility. And as a reminder, again, we will be doing a sewer rate study that is required by Ohio Water Development Authority for us to even be considered for their loan program. The last time the city did a rate study and a rate increase was in 2018. So it's been five years. So I just want to make sure before that before that it was what? It was 45, $45, right. I think we went to 60. Right. And, uh, but I mean, it, it had been, what, 10 years? At least. Since, yeah. yeah. Uh, this was, I think that was the first time there. Since we were around, since I remember. Uh, Sam and I have been for 20 years. We did it once. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. 2018 was the only one. Yeah. Now, it was inflated. I don't want to take a look. It was inflated significantly because as the township and city yeah. grow, we were getting $10,000 a pop on a tap-in fee. Right for non-city, so we might have built and got, anyway, good deal. We, we're, we're due for a raise. We're still the lowest guy yeah. anywhere, yeah. significantly lower. It should be set up that every year it just goes up a percentage. You can do that, and we, and we discussed that before, I and, think that's and the, right the way majority of council chose not to do it at that time. Oh. New council. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that it's not a surprise to any resident business that this is something that is where the city is required to do in order to receive any type of loan funding from OWDA. And OWDA historically provides the best type of funding that we wouldn't have to go to a, you know, a private funding source for this. Um, quickly to the fitness center before I move on to 2024. Um, 
The four largest components for the fitness center come from revenue, um, revenue from memberships, programming fees, facility rentals, and the water park. The total estimate for 2023 was 1.54 million. Through October, they are at 1.05 million. Um, the revenue estimate is lower than what is anticipated. There were some problems with some programming this year, but Jen and Michelle are coming up with some new programs for next year. There will be uh, a forthcoming rate structure uh, change that will be brought to council at one of the um, upcoming meetings. Um, in all due respect for fitness, there are plenty of gyms out there. It really takes a lot for fitness centers, especially community centers, to compete with you know the Planet Fitnesses at their ten dollars a month. So it really um, they're. They're really working hard to try and come up with some new programming, attract those people, make sure that those people who are here stay. And I will say, when I found out that the city offers memberships to non-residents, I was shocked because there's not a lot of cities that make that available to people who are not residents in their community. All right, so we will quickly move to 2024 revenue estimate. So I wanted to make sure that we kept a couple things in mind. I always we would like to be reasonable, conservative, and be fair and equitable, as well as competitive with our user rates. Um, there are a lot of different places, like I just said, that people can go for gyms, for golf courses. You want to make sure that you are not, you know, price gouging people, but you also need to make sure that you are covering your costs. Um, and that's that generally tends to be harder with government. Um, you know, private places can do many different things. We have to be more cognizant of how we're spending our money. Um, so if the general fund, you will have to excuse me, there already is a change to this. I have one number in here and one number in my revenue estimate. The revenue estimate currently is not the 30.9 million, it is 31.06 million. So as I said, they're estimates, so they will change and they already have. Um, <laughs> That's the 2024 general fund estimate? Correct. For revenue? Yes. Thank you. So it's only a 1% increase from 2023. However, we did have a significant $1.3 million transfer from the ARPA fund that we will not be receiving next year. Um, esti uh, income tax collections for 2024 estimated at $26.2 million. We have uh, received news of several businesses that are coming to the city. Um, we do expect that there's going to be a correlating increase to our income tax because of that. Um, there will be an 18% reduction in building department fees. Uh, the 2023 number was estimated um, exponentially higher than um, what the data has come in at. Um, it's also not in line with what our historical trend was, so I don't know if we were anticipating some type of housing project or something like that, but Twinsburg is pretty built out, so our you know, new housing construction fees or things like that are not going to be um, as significant as what they were anticipated. Um, there will be increases to Parks and Rec as well as Senior Center revenue in an attempt to provide cost containment strategies, um, especially the Senior Center. I know that they are looking to um, not necessarily make sure that every cost of every program is covered by user fees, but to bridge that gap a little bit better than we have been. Um, there's also a, an increase to investment income uh, in, from, in 2023 is 175,000. Next year it will be 425,000. Um, we have had sustainable growth with our interest rates. Um, we did make a change to uh, one of our bank accounts that is now netting us around $20,000 in interest a month that we weren't receiving. Um, so just changes that we can do in-house. Good job. What rate are you getting? Um, for what? For your savings account that, that, you're, that, that you changed around. It's, we didn't, it's our checking account. We changed it to a hybrid account. So what they do is they charge us a little bit different fee structure for our like a, our sweep account where they do all of our, like how much you pay per check, how much you pay for ACH. But they invest the rest of it. So um, it was really kind of common sense change where if they're going to charge us two more cents for a check, but we're going to get, you know, whatever percentage in interest. And it fluctuates per month based on what our balance is. 
and that was all Christina. She Good job. She found that and did that. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will have an additional transfer in 2024 from ARPA to the general fund for around $200,000. This is for grant monies received from um, supplemental police department personnel. So thank you to Lieutenant Donato for continuing to fill out the paperwork for that grant. Um, that money is still coming in. Um, so just uh, let's go over enterprise funds really quickly. I know we have five minutes. Um, so again, we talked about the wastewater treatment plant. We are going to look at the rate study. Uh, again, that's part of the loan application process. In conjunction with sewer usage fees, um, the water utility fund, which is 512, a portion of each sewer bill, which is $2.50, gets deposited into the water utility fund for repairs and improvements. Um, we may want to change that in, a, in the future. It is pretty much an insignificant number when you look at the amount for we have to pay for any type of repairs. I think we estimated $80,000 this year. Can we use that for road construction too? Um, I'd have to look. I meant I don't, as far as stormwater or sewer. I don't, Nate is shaking his head yes. I don't know because the ordinance that is uh, referenced with the $2.50 is so old that Amy didn't even have a copy of it. So um, it would definitely be something that we could look into changing, though. Um, for Glen Eagles and for the fitness center, again, with Glen Eagles, um, weather conditions are the largest contributor. We wanted to try and remain conservative. Um, again, there's a change in the contract with the clubhouse, which leaves things kind of up in the air of what our banquet or what our revenue is going to be for that. Um, I don't want to say we can, can't accurately predict theirs, but especially with the rents and reimbursements, their revenue was only changed slightly because I don't want to, I would like to think that the number we're currently getting is the lesser of the two, sure. but you never know. Um, so the total anticipated revenue for the golf course in 2024 is 1.64 million. It's less than a 1% increase over 2023, just given to the fluctuation of the unknown. Um, as for the fitness center, um, the water Christina, park. Um, do, you, do you think a 1% increase makes sense if we had a record year in the golf course? Do you think we're going to get that? Do you think that's realistic? Do, do I think it's too low or too high? Do I think it's too high? <coughs> a 1% increase? Given the fact we had a record year and you can never guarantee I would what's say going to happen year to year. No, I don't want to estimate our revenue as less that because our account trend has showed that the golf course is continuously year over year, except for the year with COVID, done extremely well. We haven't, um, rates we haven't changed the rates. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that the revenue that we receive from, from the restaurant group ends up being significantly more than what we're currently getting. But I don't want to, I don't want to overestimate either. So I think 1% is a, a conservative number, but still okay, that's, hopeful. That's what I wanted to know. Thanks. No, absolutely. Um, for the fitness center, the water park provides an amenity that most cities don't have. Again, we talked about how you can provide you can buy a membership and you don't even have to be a resident um, there were some programs that were not offered in 2023 which caused the decrease in their programming revenue that we hope to alleviate with uh, bringing back some programs establishing new programs um, and again the fitness center staff or parks and rec staff will be bringing forward a rate change um, the anticipated revenue for the fitness center in 2024 is 1.47 million. It's still a 5% decrease from 2023. Um, we just haven't had the numbers there this year, and I don't think that I don't think estimating high in this case is necessarily the best method to go um, to go forward with. So I would rather go lower, um, just based on the fact that we're $500,000 less in revenue in 2023 than where we. Uh, we anticipated um, the revenue estimate for all funds is 52.29 million it's a six percent increase over the 49.4 million for 2023 um, we didn't I didn't discuss a lot of the other funds we do receive a lot of grant funding um, those are smaller in nature in comparison with the enterprise funds and the general fund um, again, we only did incremental changes to the police and fire pension fund and the police and fire levy because those are all set by property tax. Um, 
again, these are all estimates. They are going to change before the last meeting, and at the next finance committee, finance committee meeting, we will start talking about expenditures. Are there any questions from the board? No, no sir. Great, great presentation. Any questions from council? No, great. I agree. Great presentation. Thank this you. is well, well put together. Well Not enough time. Out. Well <laughs> thought out, though. Very well thought out. Yes. One quick question. Mm -hmm. It appears that Cardinal Health and other companies left us, and we were very concerned. I was very concerned with uh, people working at home not paying taxes. Doesn't seem that it's affected us that badly. No, it hasn't. Um, there is going to be one change with the income tax tonight that may have a slight effect, and that's on the charging for penalties. But I, I really, we have not seen the work from home have that big of effect. Thank you. Are there You're any welcome. other questions? Next, uh, the next meeting is on November 28th. And at this time, I'd like to uh, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. A second. Mr. Barr seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. All right.